Welcome back to Kenton and Habiba. If you are new here, today it is just Habiba. And I thought I would share some wisdom with you, drop some knowledge today. So for those of you who don't know, I had a pretty significant birthday this year. I turned the big 5-0. Can you believe it? I turned 50. I know, I don't look 50, I know. <laughs> In fact, I feel 35. But honestly, I feel like getting older is a privilege and so many women are discouraged from sharing their age. We're kind of told to keep it quiet. Don't tell people you're getting older. I mean, come on, unless you're going to die young, which I really hope not to do, we're gonna get older, right? And so again, it is a privilege to get older and I thought I would share some wisdom with you. You know, they say share your gifts. So for those of you who don't know, not only am I a 50-year-old uh, woman as of August 13th, but I'm also a married woman with three teenage children and I also happen to be a trained medical physician. So I come with a lot of life experience and I also happen to be a proud immigrant. So I was actually born in England and uh, we moved to Nigeria when I was a little girl, lived there for about uh, 11 years before moving to the United States. So that's the condensed version. I've lived all over the United States. I've had some international travel since I have been in the US. And so I'm just trying to share with you that I do have some level of life experience. Anyway, I just wanted to share some wisdom with you, some life lessons that I have acquired or I have learned. So let's start off with number one. You don't need their approval. You don't need their approval. So what I mean by this is that a lot of us go through life always looking for validation, meaning that you have something you wanna do, you have a project you've thought about doing, you have a job you wanna take, you have something that you're doing in your life, or maybe even at your job, you're constantly looking for validation. So you know that you're doing a good job, but you don't feel happy or you don't feel content unless someone tells you you did an awesome job. And the truth is, once you are an adult, once you have some level of maturity, you will rely on your internal compass, that internal compass that tells you you are doing a good job or you are moving in the right direction. Because a lot of times when we are growing up, we look to our parents to for approval. You know, we need our mom or dad to tell us that we're going in the right direction or that we're doing the right thing before we feel like, you know, yes, we can move ahead. But I think once we really grow up, one thing that you have to uh, learn to do is stop looking for outside validations. You don't need them to tell you what to do next. You don't need them to tell you, you did a good job, you know you know, right? So I think that's really an important lesson because that also come, comes with confidence. The more confident you are, the less likely you're going to need other people to tell you, you know, how great you are or how amazing you are. You just do it. You do what you think is right. So that would be lesson number one. Life lesson number two, your parents were once children. <laughs> So take them off that pedestal that you put them on. Just like you, they have made mistakes. They will continue to make mistakes. And just like you, they are not perfect. So take them off that pedestal that you have put them on. Because honestly, part of growing up is realizing that your parents are really older versions of themselves. Just like you are an older version of yourself. You don't suddenly come to know everything. You don't have all the answers. You know, you're not perfect. Your parents aren't perfect either. So they did the best with what they had. And as a child, you looked up to them, hopefully. You looked up to them. You wanted their approval. But now that you're an adult, just realize that they are vulnerable. They are fearful. They do not have all the answers, just like you don't. So just recognize that 
because a lot of times I think that we think about our parents almost like these gods, or at least I know I did. And then you get to an age where you realize, ha, huh, mom doesn't know everything. My father didn't know everything. They did the best they could with what they knew. Number three, enjoy your youth. Today is the youngest you're gonna be in your life. Think about that. Today is the youngest you will ever be in your life at this moment in time. Enjoy your youth. I know, for example, I spent a lot of my youth in school. I spent a lot of my youth training. I spent a lot of my youth worrying about how mature I was or how immature I was or how serious I needed to be. No. Life is not about being serious all the time. Enjoy your youth. Now, I don't mean be irresponsible, go out there drinking, go out there partying, which at this moment in time, you probably can't do anyway with the pandemic. But you know what I mean? Responsibly enjoy your youth. Don't worry about getting older too quickly. The fourth life lesson would be that your biggest sense of wealth comes from your health. So for me, or my interpretation of wealth is having options. And having options means being healthy enough to do the things that you wanna do. I don't care how much money you have in the bank or how big your investment stock is or whatever it is you know, materialistic that you have, it means absolutely nothing if you don't have your health. Now more than ever, I'm sure you realize that this pandemic has definitely reminded us of this fact. Now, this is something that I've always held to heart many, 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 many years ago. When I moved to this country and I worked in a very fancy hospital with gold elevators, and I've told this story before, gold elevators, oriental rugs, some of the richest patients in the world that were coming for you know, end of life care coming because this was their last chance at health. I always thought about all those fancy materialistic things that surrounded us and how it meant nothing to any of those patients. All they wanted was you know, another week, another year at life. So it's always been important for me. Uh, I'm constantly reminding myself that yes, there are certain things I want. Yes, there are certain things I can't afford at this time, but it's not as important as having my health. As long as I wake up and I feel good and I know that I'm healthy or that I'm trying to do my best to attain the best health possible, that to me is the ultimate wealth. So don't lose sight of that. I know that we're going through some hard times. There are a lot of people that are struggling to pay their rent uh, struggling to pay their mortgage or car payments or they don't know how long um, they're going to have this current job whatever the situation may be in your life just remember as long as you have your health you have the potential for greatness you have the potential to turn this thing around um, you have the potential to still do amazing things with your life so don't lose sight of that acknowledge people's wins acknowledge people's wins what i mean by that is you know get in the habit if you don't already of congratulating people when you know that they've done something amazing you know acknowledge the fact that your sister or that friend of yours has done something amazing congratulate them maybe you're a parent and your child has done something great but somehow you have too much pride or you think that in your culture, it's not appropriate to hug your child or to congratulate them or let them know that what they've done is amazing. I know that, you know, even here in America, we live in a culture that teaches us that, you know, ah, they're doing well, I'm not gonna acknowledge that, you know? Somehow by them succeeding, they're taking away from me. No, we can all win. She's doing well, I'm going to acknowledge it. She looks amazing. I'm going to tell her she looks great. He's doing something wonderful for his community. I'm going to let him know. You know, put your pride aside and acknowledge the other person's win. They win, you win. We all win. It's possible that we can all succeed. Just because everybody may appear to be self-centered and selfish 
doesn't mean you have to be. It's important to be kind. I think in succeeding in this world, it's really important to be kind and sometimes we get so jaded because we recognize that most people that we deal with are always trying to get something from us. You'll realize as you get older that people deal with you because they're trying to see what they can take from you, how they can use you, in what way you can serve their purpose. So I think it's very important that despite all of that, that you remain kind, kind and respectful. Now I don't mean naive. No, you need to be smart. You need to be aware, you know, of people's intentions, but you also need to still remain kind and respectful and learn to recognize that there are genuine people out there. We live in a very superficial world, again, where people are just there to use you half the time, but there are some kind, genuine people left on, in the world. And I think it's important to be one of those people. Teach people how you wanna be treated. Teach them how you want to be treated. So many of us walk through life being disrespected, being discounted, feeling ignored, and not standing up for ourselves. I think it's very important, as soon as someone you feel is disrespecting you or discounting you in some manner, and it might be at your job, it might be your boss, it might be your spouse or significant other, make sure that you let them know that you didn't appreciate whatever it is that they did that was not appropriate or that you felt was not appropriate, let them know. Because a lot of times we go through life wondering why people are mistreating us when we never stop to tell them this is what we expect or this is what we didn't like or this is what we prefer. You need to stand up for yourself and let people know that no, I deserve better, I want to be treated a certain way, and this is what I expect. I'll use myself for example. Sometimes, especially when I was younger, being a black female who happens to be, you know, petite, who happens to look younger, I often felt that especially men in authority or men in power would take advantage or you know discount me as if my opinion didn't matter or that somehow I couldn't stand up for myself but let me tell you there were many occasions where they were shocked when I stood up for myself and I demanded a certain level of respect now I don't mean yelling or screaming or cursing that's not what I mean I mean use your head use your voice and speak up and stand up for yourself. You deserve better. Everyone doesn't have to like you, okay? So what I mean is all those so-called acquaintances that you know, all those fake friends that you have, they don't have to like you. People who really care about you will like you anyway. Hopefully you're a good person and they'll like you, but that's not what's important in life that everybody has to like you. No, it's not about everybody liking you. Your parents may not even like you. What's most important is that you like you. You like you. You can look in the mirror and say, I like this person that stands in front of me. I would be that person's friend if I had to be. So I think it's really important, again, that we get away from this idea that everybody has to like us. We have to please everyone. You can't please everyone. The person you need to please is yourself. And I'm not saying that in, again, a selfish way, but I'm saying that in a way that you need to have the confidence enough to know that if you are a good person, aligned with what is right, aligned with your authentic self, people will like you. And those that don't, it doesn't matter. As long as they are not paying your bills, they are not cooking your food, it doesn't matter. What matters is that you like you. You can look in the mirror and say, I'm a good person. I'm doing what I think is right. I am upholding what my values. That's what's important. You like you. Another important lesson is always acknowledge that you don't know everything. You can't know everything. You know, we are a product of our environment and our environment is usually limited by the geography in which we, you know, reside. So there's a whole world out there. There are so many things that we will never understand. 
It is our goal in life to try to understand as much as possible and to try to learn as much as possible. But I think it is complete arrogance when you think, I know everything. There's always something more to learn. So always be open to the universe, open to another person's point of view. I'm not saying that you have to accept every new piece of information that you get, because as you know, there's a ton of rubbish out there, but be open to learning new things. Be open to, you know, opening yourself up and not closing off and feeling like, well, there's nothing else to learn. No, there's always something else to learn. Pick up a book, listen to someone's podcast, um, take a trip when it's safe to do so. It's important to remain a student of life. You know, acknowledge that I'm still learning. I don't know everything. Part of having a successful life is always setting new goals. But it's very important that while you're setting those goals, you don't lose sight of the journey. The, the joy or the accomplishment doesn't always come in the goals itself, but in enjoying the journey along the way. Don't lose sight of that. So for example, you know, when you're younger, you think, oh my God, my life is going to be so perfect when I get my degree, or my life is going to be perfect when I get married. My life is going to be perfect when I get that new car. And then you get those things and then you realize, wait a minute, life is still a struggle and there are new goals now I need to meet. So the point is that we need to accept part of life is making new goals and having new challenges and we don't want to lose sight of the journey that took us to those things you know it's not necessarily about those things it's about the journey in getting those things and we never quite arrived i know when i was younger i used to think that maybe when i turn 30 or when i turn 40 my life will be perfect i will have attained everything i want to attain and i will have all the things that I've always dreamed of and that's it. Somehow I just, I don't know, become happy, whatever happy is. Now I realize that happy is in the journey. It's not necessarily an age. It's not necessarily a specific goal. Yes, there are things in my life that have made me happy. You know, I remember for me, there were th times where it was getting into residency was a big deal or finishing medical school. I just thought, woof. My life is going to be complete. I'm just going to feel, you know, completely free because I have reached those goals or those milestones. But the truth is how I felt at 20 and how I feel now is hasn't changed that much in the sense that there are still so many things that I want to do and want to accomplish. Sometimes we have to get lost to find our way. And what I mean is that in life, we don't always have to have the right answers. We don't always have the right solutions to our problems. Sometimes we're going to make mistakes. Nobody is perfect. But part of living is that you take chances, that you experience new things, that you let not only your mind and your heart guide you, but you you know, allow yourself to experience life. And it isn't always about having the right answer. You know, many times we are taught that what you did or this choice you made was wrong, or this job you took was wrong, or this career you decided upon is not the right one. Well, it's your life to live. And in order to find the right answer, sometimes you have to experience or take the wrong road to that right answer or right solution that you're looking for. So just don't be so hard on yourself and learn to realize that we are all human, we are all going to make mistakes and we don't always have the right solutions or the right answers and that's okay. That's okay because at least you're trying, at least you're trying to do something, you know, instead of doing nothing at all. Because the worst thing you can do is out of fear of making mistakes, do nothing. That's, that's, that, that's a horrible way to go through life, doing absolutely nothing because of the fear that you will make mistakes. The, sometimes some of the best lessons that you will learn is out of the mistakes that you made, right? Isn't that what experience is? You don't learn things when life is comfortable. You don't learn, you don't learn your strength. You don't learn things when life is perfect and 
you're sitting back comfortable. You learn because things are uncomfortable. That's when you learn the most, when things are uncomfortable. So another life lesson is don't take yourself so seriously. For those of you that have been watching us on this channel for a while or know me personally, know that I'm a pretty playful kind of person. There is a time to be serious, there's a time to be adult, but there's also a time to play. And just don't forget, you know, to find that time to be yourself but also to feel free sometimes you don't have all your stuff together you're not necessarily you know wearing the perfect suit or the perfect pump so your hair is not always perfect or you're saying the perfect thing you know don't always be so self-conscious in life i think it's very freeing when you can be completely yourself not so serious and it's going to be okay it's going to be okay regardless so yeah don't forget to have fun don't forget to you know live a little bit don't be so uptight don't take people so seriously you know not everybody when someone maybe says something offensive sometimes they don't really mean it the way you took it and in turn sometimes you're gonna say things that don't come out perfectly the way you intended them to so try not to be so serious all the time you know life again is very is is short right life is short thanks for watching i appreciate you i hope you got something out of listening to these life tips maybe it was just a reminder or maybe it was just an acknowledgement of what you already know either way i really appreciate you and thanks for watching i hope you will come back soon don't forget to leave in the comment section below some life lessons that you have that you think are important to share with all of us in this community and i really appreciate it again so i will see you soon and god bless from wherever you are please stay safe and take care bye